Welcome to The Hop, a marketing podcast with a business edge. I'm your host, Matthew Taylor Farrington, co-founder of Purple Bunny Marketing. Here, we cut through the fluff and bring you real marketing and business insights, covering everything from branding to digital strategy, business automation, IT, cybersecurity, and even some leadership. No fluff, no jargon, just smart insights. So let's hop to it. This week on The Hop, we are joined by Jamin from Kinetics, and we're going to talk a little bit more around AI and how that's working in hosting. So thanks for coming along, Jamin. Doris, okay. thanks for having me again. <laughs> do do awesome. you need more coffee or something? You <laughs> looked a bit startled. Like, <laughs> are like, you ready for like me a to startle talk? rabbit? <laughs> <laughs> we're in. <laughs> yes, correct. We're straight into it today. Um, all right. Obviously, AI is one of those buzzwords. I've just talked about it in two other podcast episodes. Uh, but from your experience at Kinetics, I guess, what are businesses actually asking for when it comes to AI? What are they wanting? No idea. <laughs> <laughs> That's for your bloopers. Um, <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> no, look, um, the customers have got no clue, right? So they're, they're asking us, what is this AI? How can we use it? Uh, mm. Where do we implement it in our business to get any sort of gains? So um, it's about, you know, right now an education process because they have no clue. Yes. So, you know, we go through that journey with them and say, okay, from our perspective in the hosting land and your email and hosting environment, et cetera, this is what we can assist with. And then if you want more from our, let's talk about SEO and things like that, then we can t- start talking about things like Social B which obviously you guys are w- yes. well adverse that, which has got a lot of great AI stuff in there uh, that generates images through to generating con- uh, content, et cetera. So. Yeah, even to generating your actual plan for you. Mm. Um, I Yeah, it's fundamental. We just promoted it on our um, latest um, email blast out to our database and talking about that tool. Um, it's going to change the way we do social media. It's oh, crazy. Absolutely. Look, it, it, so. it's amazing and, and something that businesses can relate to. I think that's the thing. Mm. It's sort of, we, we talk about AI all the time. We hear about AI all the time, but how can it actually impact in my business? Correct. It's probably the best one, the best example of a, a now impact that they can understand. Yes. Agreed. Agreed. Um, or a hundred percent. I got one in last time well, too. That's all, right. Um, all right. So... Can you explain how smart updates and AI are now kind of becoming part of the hosting environments for websites? Yep. So uh, obviously in the world of hosting, we've got WordPress. So WordPress uh, yes. needs to be updated. We all know that. We've been banging on that for years. You know, uh, Rule number one, back up. Rule number two, update. So yes. it's all about that um, keeping your websites up to date. A lot of the managed WordPress hosters out there aren't really managed from a point of view of doing the updates. You've mm-hmm. got to pay all these additional costs. So where AI comes into it with that is things like um, we've got a smart AI system where it literally takes a copy of your website. It'll then do an upgrade of all the plugins, themes, whatever you select. Mm-hmm. It'll then compare the two and go, okay, well, there's no errors. There's no problems. I'll do the update now. That's all in the background. If there is a problem, it'll actually email you and say, hey, look, there's an issue here you need to have a look at. So you go and have a look at it. And it's normally something like a slider where there's an image you know, the second image is slid over. So they're trying to compare the two and you go, yes, that's okay. I'll click the button and that AI remembers it for next time. So basically the update will go through without any manual in- intervention. So um, AI from that perspective is is massive. Um, mm. Then we sort of look at the evolution of AI on top of that from a security point of view. Obviously we're keeping it up to date, keep it secure. This thing called WP Guardian, for example, uh, run by Patchstack, which is um, a, a system that sort of looks at all of your plugins on your WordPress instance and goes, okay, well, this one's out of date or hasn't been maintained for the last year, two years. We have got a patch or we will disable that plugin. Yes. So you just need to have less functionality than actually have an exploited site. So it's an active sort of AI system that sits over the top and then sort of does every, every, the, all the magic basically. Mm. And I think that's important for business owners so that they are keeping up with all the latest updates, right? Oh, absolutely. Look, and to have yeah. that tool just do it. It, they should be paying for it to get it done. Right? <laughs> if, if they're not doing it themselves manually Correct. or paying for some sort of AI tool or paying for someone like yourself or, or, or Kinetics to do the managed updates, yes. um, they should yeah, absolutely pay for that, that AI service. Yeah, fundamental and important. So, And we just had 
Martin from uh, Bizgard on earlier talking about security and all those sorts of things. And, you know, a website definitely needs to, you need to make sure you're running those latest updates to make sure Absolutely. you're staying secure. So, 100%. <laughs> Your turn. All right. So, what's the benefit of proactive AI based monitoring versus traditional site maintenance? So, from a, a proactive AI point of view versus, um, uh, human element. Most people don't update their websites, so we need to have something in place. If you're not updating your website, mm. we've got to proactively be doing it, and that's why we employ the AI bot or whatever it may to, to maintain that for you. All right, so everyone's heard of ChatGPT, but how are your clients using tools like this day-to-day -day in real business operations? Yeah. This is a really good question because a lot of them, as we covered in the first bit, was the, they've got no clue on how to use most of this AI tools. Um, mm. The f funny thing about ChatGPT, when it first came out, people did a, uh, I don't know, a, a five-dot point scenario, threw it in ChatGPT, and it, it gave out a War and Peace episode. And then they would email that to their friends and say, hey, look at this, look how clever I am. And then the person at the other end would grab that War and Peace episode and throw it back into chat GPT and it'll condense it back down to those five items. <laughs> so it was sort of, that's all they were using it for. Um, but yeah. since then, the evolution of things have gone on where you've got um, Windows 11 with uh, has been actively updated with Copilot and uh, obviously it's using the chat GPT backend engine. Um, mm. So Copilot within that and your emails, basically, you've got the ability to just talk to it and say, hey, set a calendar reminder for this, or I want to do that, um, or throw a, a note in there and it'll condense that note um, into a an email. Yes. Um, so they're sort of the functions that we're seeing businesses use, and they're saving, you know, even if you're saving 20, 30 minutes a day, that's 20, 30 minutes proactive hours that you can go and charge your end users, your clients or whatever yes. for, for proactive work. So that's how we're seeing a lot of them used, mainly in that email space. Um, but there are other uses, of course, of people starting to use AI, um, which is outside of that space, as we discussed about uh, the way that they schedule their uh, SEO, et cetera, mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and appointments. So Yeah, I, th I think there's a lot that can be done. We actually just had a chat. Uh, in the previous podcast with one of my team members about business automation and how they can implement some of those tools and how AI is now also getting involved in the business automation processes as well um, in the sense of, you know, formulating responses. Like, for example, Google reviews. You know, we've just enabled it for quite a few clients where a Google review comes in, you know, people aren't proactively responding to that, which does impact your SEO performance and annual performance from Google's perspective. And we've automated that process and the AI is now responding for them. And it's a process that, let's face it, a lot of small business owners go, I don't have time for that. I'm too busy. Forget about it. And then all of a sudden go and respond to a review from a month ago because that's when they finally remembered. So the AI takes that, as you said before, with some of the other tools, a proactive approach to making sure that it's responded to in time. Absolutely. So. It makes you look like a hero too because you're you're actively working on your business now instead of in your business. Correct. So you've got all that in your business stuff being done by AI uh, and probably better than you can do it yourself. Right? <laughs> um, yes. And, uh, <laughs> and you're proactively getting ahead of the curve, as it were. Um, yes. We're seeing also a lot of people where they're starting to employ, and we've tested this in, in our own business, where uh, we've told the customers that it is actually non-human. Mm. So a call will come in and uh, the, uh, it will be picked up like it's actually a call center person. Yes. I'll ask them a bunch of questions. And it's like you and I here talking today. You would not know that it's not a bot. Yes. And uh, it goes through a heap of questions. Oh, what's wrong with your mail? Okay, let's check this. Let's check that. And it's just going through the motions. And it mm. seems quite interesting intelligent the way it is but it's just you know, a scripted motion Correct. Um, and but it gets a result through the end and then you know if you're paying as a business if you've got a medium-sized business if you're paying 60 grand a year for that service mm. and that service actually gives you five ten people as it were employees yes that's a massive saving right oh 100 um, percent. so it, it's that's being implemented now and we're seeing a lot more of that as i said we're, we're playing with that right now in that space mm. um and it's working extremely well you would not know that it's not a human yeah agreed um we've had uh, real estate agents dipping their toe with that sort of stuff you know they do do the cold calling um to call out and to you know seek listings and whatnot and they can actually now upload their voice reading certain aspects and the AI can now use that voice and recraft what it needs 
and produce a phone call out yep. to somebody and you think you're talking to the agent. Yep. Um, I think it's crazy, but we'll be able to do soon um, where mm. we can kind of, you know, maybe work a six-hour day, not an eight-hour day, or, a, yeah. or as a business owner, 12-hour days, um, and have some of this AI stuff doing some of that, that granular work for us, definitely. Yeah, absolutely. So, all right. So what should business business owners not rely on AI for just yet? What what are things that aren't quite there yet? Um, I think you've got to be selective and you've got to look at actually what the job or the task that the AI is doing. Yes. So, um, you know, there's there's going to be a lot of legislation around AI, you know, and, and that's going to be a future growth of, you know, lawyers coming into the play with it. <laughs> They're going to be playing with the e- e- efficacy and all the rest of it. So yes. I, I think you have to look at what what is your actual outcome out of it? Mm. And, and then if I do implement it, am I saving money? Um, am I, you know, saving time, which is obviously money? Mm. Am I improving the customer service? For yes. my customer, because at the end of the day, if you if you're improving that whole customer experience, it's worth doing. Mm. Um, so I, I guess it's about analysing what the process is that you want to implement AI for, yep. um, and then weigh that up against the cost and the outcome. Yes, and then just go through that every time you go to implement some sort of new AI. Um, yes, that's what my biggest suggestion there. Yeah. Um, I agree. I think there's um, there's certain things that we can't quite rely on it 100% of the time yet. And I think uh, another thing just to remind people is you shouldn't just use it and trust it. You do need to check it. Oh, absolutely. Um, <laughs> I've received some things uh, lately. I've received some emails that I can clearly go, hmm, that was written using AI because they clearly didn't you know, read it before sending it back or whatever the case may be. So I do think it's important that... Um, you do check its output and what you're looking, what you're kind of trusting, I guess, there as well. And so. and if you're not paying for an AI service, i.e. ChatGBT, yes, don't put anything in there <laughs> from a from a company point of view. Or always yes. leave it out. Um, also, really start looking at how you train that whole scenario around AI, um, mm. because if you're you, you are using AI to assist you in writing a, a, a response in an email, which is fair enough. Let's do it. Yep. Let's use it. Um, check the spelling, for example. Yes. Um, it's, make sure you set yourself to your voice. Yes. Um, for example, we're in Australia, so therefore we want English spelling instead of Americanized. American. Yeah. And that's the first teller, right? When you get an email, it's all American spelling. Correct. Because they, they've gone through some sort of AI system. Yes. So double check all of that sort of stuff. You can actually tell AI to go and say, for example, if you're writing a blog article, and AI is great for this, yes. where you go, okay, have a look at my previous blog articles that I've actually written myself. I want it to be displayed in this voice, mm. which is my voice, and I want to use the references within my support system and the way that we talk. Yes. And it'll go away and actually pull that together and give you an output. Mm. Then you've got to read it. Because <laughs> <laughs> yes. it makes sure it's, it's, it makes sense, right? And then Correct. make sure that the facts that it's pulling is actual fact because in a lot of cases, let's say from a technical point of view, mm. it may not be fact. Right. Correct. And it, it's only trying to use what it has access to exactly. to pull information. Yeah. And if it can't, it kind of makes it up. So, um, yeah, it's very important that you do make sure that you read what it outputs. Uh, definitely. So, all right. Well, that's it. Awesome. We're a wrap. Thank you for coming in. Thanks Thank for having you. a chat about AI and how it's kind of impacting hosting, but also more so how, it, how it's uh, being utilised in business, I guess, as well. So that's a wrap on this episode of The Hop, a marketing podcast with a business edge. So if you've enjoyed the show, don't forget to like, follow and subscribe on your favourite podcast platform and connect with us on social media. Have you got something to share? Apply to be a guest on our show. Just head to our website and let's have a chat. Thanks for tuning in. And until next time, keep your marketing smart, your business sharp, and your brand hopping.